Here's a quick look at all the drop-down components I. We've got grouped drop-downs, expandable menus, filters, selection menus, light and dark mode support, and more. Each one is designed to be clean, flexible, and easy to drop into any Swift 2i project. But for this tutorial, we're focusing on the core, the simple drop-down menu right here. It's the base everything else is built on. Once you understand how this one works, you'll be able to build the rest in no time. And if you want to explore or use all the components, you can grab the full source code. Links in the video description. Before we jump into building the dropdown, let's take a step back. These are the key SwiftUI concepts we'll focus on model, enum, overlay, offset, fixed eye size, transition, and geometry reader. We're going to break down each one with simple examples, nothing complicated, just enough to really understand how they work. Once all of that is clear, we'll bring it together and build the full drop down menu from scratch. We're starting with simple model is a custom data structure. It describes what one drop down item looks like. Instead of writing the same code for each option, we define it once and reuse it. This struct is called drop down option and it conforms to identifiable. Identifiable means that each item must have a unique ID. That's why we write ID UUID. This helps SwiftUI keep track of each option when we use a list like for each. The next property is title. This is the text the user sees, like option one or logout. It's a required value, so we don't give it a default. Then we have color. By default, it's set to primary. In Swift UI, primary is a system color that changes automatically depending on the current mode. In light mode, it shows as black. In dark mode, it shows as white. The equal sign here means we're giving it a default value. So when you create a new drop-down option, you don't have to provide a color unless you want to. If you want to customize it, you can pass any other Swift UI color, like red or blue. But if you're happy with the default, just leave it out. Swift UI will use primary automatically. Next is icon. This is a string with a question mark. That means it's optional. Some options may have icons and some may not. If no icon is passed, it stays nil and nothing shows. And finally, action. This is a closure, a small block of code that runs when the user taps the option. Each item can perform a different action. For example, close the menu, open settings, or sign out. So now we have a complete reusable model, one that includes everything the dropdown needs, title, color, icon, action, and ID. Let's start by creating an array to hold our drop-down items. We call it options, and it's a list of drop-down options. Right now, it's empty, but we'll fill it step by step. When we create a new drop-down option, Swift will ask for all the properties we defined in the model. That means we need to provide a title, a color, an icon, and an action. We'll start with the title. Here we write title, details. This is the text the user will see in the drop-down menu. Next, we add a color. In this case, we'll use blue, but you can also delete it, and Swift will automatically use primary. That means the system color that adapts to light and dark mode, it's optional. You only set it if you want a different color. Now, we add the icon. We're using the system symbol called info circle. If you don't want an icon, you can skip this too. It's optional. Every option needs an action. We'll start with an empty closure just to complete the structure. This is where we define what happens when the user taps this item. Finally, we add a print statement inside the action. This will run when the user taps this drop down item. It prints show product details to the console just for testing. This is our final array. All the options here include icons. We have a details option edit, share, and delete. Each one has a title, a system icon from SF, symbols, and a custom action. This is the full list of menu items we need. And this array is what we'll use to build the actual drop-down menu in the UI. Now let's display all the drop-down options on screen. We start with a V-stack to stack the items vertically. Inside that, 
we use for each to loop through the array of options. For each item, we create a row using an H stack that lets us show the icon next to the text. But before we show the icon, we check a property called show icon. This is a simple variable that we've set to true. It gives us the option to show or hide icons in the dropdown. So if show icon is true and the current option has an icon, we show it using image system name. If it's set to false, the dropdown will only show text. After the icon, we display the options title using text option dot title. Then we apply the color defined in the model using foreground color option dot color. We also add a bit of vertical padding to make each item easier to tap. Finally, we add on tap gesture so we can respond when the user taps an item. When tapped, the item runs its action, which is defined in the model. And then we close the dropdown using with animation is expanded equal false. That's how we build a clean, reusable menu using real data and a simple layout. I'd really love to hear your feedback. It helps me improve and make the next videos even better. And if you have any ideas or topics you want to see next, feel free to drop your suggestions. Thanks for watching.